Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I'm about to show you guys how to make knockback, a knockback, or knockback in ragdoll and stuff like that. Um, this video was requested me a while ago, and stuff, and I felt the need just to, I guess, make a video on it. Um, if you watch my how to make the M1 combat system from the strongest battlegrounds, you'll see that it's literally the same thing. I just removed some things that weren't needed because that was more so focused on like trying to replicate what the strongest better grounds had this video is solely focused on just how to make how to uh knock a player back and how to make them uh, ragdoll and stuff that's just the point of the video and stuff so i'm gonna have a basic combat system you know just left punch right punch and then it's more so focused on just demonstrating to you guys that you can knock players back and they also get ragdolled and stuff so yeah uh let's go ahead and get straight into the video thank you guys for all the love and support you guys showed the how to make you guys showed on the how to make the m1 strongest battlegrounds video and uh yeah if you're watching this as a as a premiere what's up appreciate you for checking out the premiere just letting you guys know this is not live i know some people i i read all the comments so i know people be thinking like it's live like no this is pre-recorded this is this a video that's just airing but anyway let's go ahead let's go ahead and get straight into it okay so first thing you're gonna do is we're going to, of course, need a rig because we're going to need a rig to test, right? To so test, like, make sure the combat system works. So let's click avatar and let's click rig builder and then you can insert the rig of your choice and you can just leave that right there, right? And then we're going to need a remote event to communicate between the server and the client. So head on over to replicated storage, click the plus icon, insert a remote event. If you don't see it, simply search for it, insert one, and then name it combat events and then leave that inside of the replicated storage. Then instead of server script service, you're going to have your three animations. Um, we're going to come back to insert a server script. And once we create the server script, we're going to put the three of these animations into the server script after the fact. But we're going to come back to insert the script after we finish the client side scripting and stuff. So you can just leave these as is. The insert animation, click the plus icon, type animation. Then you want to name your animation. Be very specific with your naming. So knockback left punch and right punch that's the naming i went with and stuff right then you would just throw your animation id in here and it'll autofill the rbx asset id portion right and then just and then just give them a name then you can leave that there until we come back then instead of the sound service i have sounds here's what they sound like just some punch sound effects you can get these by going to the toolbox going to audio simply just type punch just literally just type punch sound effect you guys will find a whole bunch of options to choose from right but yeah let's go ahead and get straight into the video so let's open up stutter player and let's enter a local script into stutter player scripts we can go ahead and name this script combat script in parentheses but local we're going to delete print hello world and then i'm going to make four variables first things first i'm going to make a variable for the user input service so local uis equal to game get service to so user input service then i'm going to get the combat remote event so local combat event is equal to game that replicated storage wait for child combat event then i'm going to make a variable for the attack number so local attack number is equal to one this pretty much is a way so i can keep check of uh like what attack we need to use like, like if a player you know how like you want to order to go left punch right punch this is how you keep track of that like one is obviously left punch two is right punch and stuff so if the value is equal to one then it's going to do a then it's going to throw a left punch if it's equal to two it's going to throw a right punch and then it'll just keep playing on in that cycle but you'll see more so you'll see more what i mean when we get into the actual function and then of course i'm gonna make a variable for the cooldown local cooldown is equal to false the cooldown simply just works so that whenever the animation is finished for the attack the player will be taken off the cooldown so that they can't like be trying to use attacks at the same time and stuff you can't interrupt another attack pretty much so then, time to get into the function. I'm going to say UIS that input began connect function in parentheses put in input comma processed, right? Then enter and then I'm going to say if input that user input type is equal to nm that user input type that keyboard and oh sorry not key, sorry guys <laughs> mouse button one I forgot this is supposed to be like a and this was like an M1 system. well you guys can choose whatever you want but. I forget, it's supposed to be like an M1 type system and stuff. I usually, I'm so used to doing keybinds that I'd say that like, I've only done mass button one for like three or four videos. So that's why it'd be throwing me off anyway. And processed is equal to false. Uh, processed is how we check to see if the players, um, to make sure that the player is not typing in chat. They're just pressing the key regularly. And of course, make sure that cooldown 
is set to false. If it's set to false, we're going to set cooldown equal to true because the player is now on cooldown. Then we're going to set up an if statement. If attack number is equal to one, this means that the player, the player's attack should be a left punch. So what we're going to do is we're going to say attack number plus equal to one. We're going to increase that by one to you know make it equal to two. So that, so that when it comes back again, when a player tries to attack again for the second time, it's going to know. Okay, let's throw a right punch. So we're going to say combat event fire server left punch right. And we're going to say enter this is what i was saying when i meant that i want your naming to be to, to match left punch left punch the animations need to match up with the name of the the event or attack type then i'm going to say else if attack number is equal to two this means that we're going to throw a right punch so you can copy and paste this so control c control v only difference is you want to delete the plus sign so that is just set back to one so it'll throw a left punch and change this to right punch and just like that, we have finished that function onto the second function for the script, and then we can move on to the server script. So I'm going to say combat event dot on client event connect function in parentheses put event type enter. And I'm going to say if event type is equal to cooldown end enter, then cooldown. Oh, sorry, not continue. Then cooldown is equal to false. So then the player is no longer no longer needs to be on cooldown since the attack is finished. We can exit out the script and we can insert a server script into server script service and we can go ahead and throw these animations into the script. And then we can go ahead and name the script combat script and in parentheses put server. Right. And then we can go ahead and create some variables. Let's delete print hello world. And let's get the sound service first. Local SS equal to game get service sound service. Then let's get the debris service. Local DS is equal to game get service debris. Then I'm going to get the combat remote event. Combat event is equal to game, the replicated storage, wait for child, combat event, just like how we did on the local script. Then I'm going to create a table so that we know that players can, uh, players are able to damage and that so that people don't get double hit. So we're going to say local players who can damage is equal to special brackets, right? Then I'm going to set up three different functions. The first function is going to be the load animation function. So I'm going to say local function load animation and then we're going to say humanoid comma animation that's that's the information or the arguments we're passing over i'm going to set up the animation track so for short i, I abbreviated by saying at which is for animation track is equal to humanoid load animation then of course we're going to throw the animation in there and then i'm going to say i'm going to say ss dot punch sound effect play and then I'm going to say AT play. And this is how we play an animation track. Then I'm going to say AT animation track that ended, which means when the animation track is finished, then we're going to fire the remote event back to the client. The so combat event fire. Make sure you do fire client, not fire all clients. Then I'm going to do game dot players get player from character. And then I'm going to and I'm going to say humanoid dot parent right. Then we'll go in between the parentheses and say comma in quotation marks. We're going to say cool down end, right? Now onto the second function. I'm going to say local function. This will be the damage handler. Damage handler. In a parentheses, I'm going to put the character. The, so pretty much the character is attacking and then the character's damage, which of course means the character that's being attacked. So character to damage. Then enter. Then I'm gonna uh, use an if statement. So I'm gonna say if table dot bind players who can damage character dot name to make sure that the character trying to attack it like they're able to attack. If we find the name, we want to remove their name. So players who can damage comma table dot find players who can damage character dot name and make sure you're doing character not character to damage. Just make sure you're selecting the right one. And then I'm gonna say ss dot dbz punch sound. Then I'm gonna say I'm going to say stop just in case it's already playing. And then I'm also going to stop the punch sound effect just in case it's playing as well. Right. And then I'm going to say character to damage dot humanoid dot health is less than equal to 10, which means it's going to subtract 10 away from the player's health. And then ss dot dbz punch sound play. Right. Then I'm going to set up the animation track. I'm going to, we can just copy and paste this. So just control C, control V, right. And then of course you're just going to need to change some things so for here this is the knockback animation i have and stuff uh the animations i have work on r15 so i think i'm pretty sure let me double check no actually sorry guys animations i have work on r6 but yeah you guys may have to find your own animation but yeah 
So I'm gonna do character to damage that humanoid, right? And then with this for the load animation, I'm gonna say, and then with this, I'm gonna say script regular brackets, and then I'm gonna say knockback. We're gonna refer to the, we're gonna reference the knockback animation. And I'm going to the outside, and then I'm going to play the animation track. So a t, so a t play right. Then after that, I'm going to create an attachment because that's just the knockback animation. So, so far, we've damaged the uh, we've damaged enemy player as well as we've played the knockback animation, but we actually need to knock the player back, right? So let's say local attachment. I think I spelled that wrong. Uh, yeah, I spelled that wrong. Attachment you to instance that new attachment, and then you want to parent this to the character to damage that humanoid part. Right, then we're going to create a linear velocity after. So linear velocity is equal to instance dot new linear velocity, comma parent it to the attachment. Then we're going to set some properties. We're going to say linear velocity dot max force is equal to nine 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 nine, so about five nines. Then you're going to say linear velocity dot vector velocity is equal to parentheses character. You're going to say character dot humanoid root part dot position minus character to damage that humanoid root part that position right then I'm gonna go on the outside of those parentheses and say dot unit times vector three dot new zero comma zero negative 40 so we can knock the player back right then we're gonna say linear velocity dot attachment zero is equal to attachment right then I'm gonna say character to damage that's how we do the knockback Here's how we handle uh, the ragdoll. So I'm going to say character damage that humanoid root part anchored is equal to false. Then character to damage that humanoid root part that C frame. And then let's say times let's say times equals C frame dot angles. And let's say math dot rad one eighty comma zero comma zero right. Then lastly, I'm going to say DS, which is the debris service add item attachment. We're going to destroy the attachment after 0.1 seconds. We only want the attachment to uh, be, you know, to be exist to exist for 0 0.1 of a second. The reason for that is because if you were to keep the attachment, like the linear velocity within the player, inside the player, the player would just be flung. Like that's how you would just fling a player. They would just be flung infinitely until they die. But if you just do it for 0 0.1 second, then they'll just get, they'll just get thrown in a direction. But obviously will stop after that you know after they've been thrown but yeah on to the last function so we have combat event the on server event connect function in parentheses put plr to serve for the player and then attack type you can put either attack type or event type up to you guys someone create a variable for the player's character local character is equal to player dot character right then i'm going to create a variable for the player's humanoid i'm going to say well first i'm going to say if character then Create a variable for the humanoid local humanoid is equal to character let's say find first child humanoid right and then i'm going to say if humanoid then we can proceed if attack type is equal to left punch enter right the great thing is um for what i'm about to do on what i'm about to do we just have to really do it one time and then we can copy and paste and then change two things. So I'm gonna save you guys probably like an extra two to three minutes of scripting. So yeah. So I'm gonna say I'm sure the load animations function and then I'm gonna send over, you know, players humanoid as well as the the animation. So script attack type, right? And then I'm gonna insert the player's name to the table so they can do damage. This you can players who can do damage, and then I'm gonna say player.name, insert their name to the table. Then I'm going to set the damage, the trigger for the damage function, character left arm, since it's the left punch, left arm dot touched, connect function, in parentheses put hit, enter. And then I'm going to set up two variables. First is local character to damage, which of course will be hit dot parent. And then humanoid, then of course humanoid to damage would be character to damage find first child humanoid right and then i'm, I'm gonna say if humanoid to damage if a humanoid exists within the character 
and table that find players you can damage player dot name then from there i'm gonna uh i don't know what i just did oh forgot the then then i'm gonna what the hell did i just do oh i, oh, I didn't press enter i was like i was like what anyway then from there i'm gonna remove the player's name from the table so let's save ourselves some time let's just go back up here control c the table dot remove remove the player's name from the table and then um from there i can trigger i actually no oh, i'm stupid i forgot the damage on the function i forgot i'm stupid guys I'm sorry <laughs> never mind ignore that we're going to trigger the damage handle the function i forgot the damage handle the function handles that so we're going to send over the character and then the character's damage right and then we're going to and then sh we shouldn't need to play the animation track since yeah we already have that yeah yeah we'll get there so we don't need that okay so yeah we're good there right and then i'm gonna go on the outside so say about let's say if this is the if humanoid then i'll go on the outside right here and then i'm gonna say that's that wait about 0 0.4 seconds it's up to you guys for how long you want it to be but i'm gonna say if table that fine players can do damage player dot name i'm gonna copy and paste what i already had pasted so control v right and that was the table dot remove now we're gonna set up the right punch so I'm going to go here and then I'm going to say enter and I'm going to say else if attack type is equal to right punch enter, right? Then here's what I meant. We can copy and paste all of this. So control C, control V, save this a lot of time. Now, all I got to do now is just change this to right arm. That's literally all I got to do. And then from there, and then from there, I should be good, I believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think, I honestly think we should be good. And stuff so yeah uh if there's any issues then we can go ahead and troubleshoot as always if you guys want access to any of my scripts or models you guys can become either a channel member or a discord subscriber links to either of those options can be found in the description shout out to all my discord subscribers and channel members i greatly appreciate the love and support y'all been showing really do appreciate it but anyway let's go ahead and test this so okay boom there we go we, we're hearing the sound effects and you see and you see they're getting knocked back and they're getting ragdolled as well so yeah that's how you make uh knock back as well as ragdoll if you just came for just one like just knock back or just ragdoll you can just leave out you can just leave out whatever part you don't uh care for um remember so uh, this so all of that and this is knock back this is ragdoll so just to just to let people know. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe. Links to my Roblox scoop and Discord can be found in the description. The Discord server is almost 800 members. We're about to start doing game nights there. So you guys should definitely join up. Thank you guys for watching. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next video.